Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. As always, we are late to the game. So we're going to be talking about my personal top 10 favorite movies of 2024 so far. Now, before we officially start this off, I just want to put it out there that I have, as of today, July the 6th, I have watched 28 films, okay? So in case you're like, well, where's X, Y, and Z? Odds are I have not watched X, Y, and Z. A little update. At first, they told me it was just like a tiny little, hey, could be a fracture, could be just a bone kind of sticking out here. And then went for a follow-up, and then you could see my bone healing, the little calcium buildup all the way across. Thankfully, no surgery, okay? But I do have to keep wearing this just for another week, and then I have to go for some therapy situation. We're gonna cruise through it, like, but we really are, y'all. Well, this is gonna be quick because I'm hungry. I am hungry. I was like, should I go ahead and eat something before filming? And I go, no, because you already put some lipstick on. Let's go ahead and get started. And um, as y'all can tell, I have a little different little format. I started doing this, I think, last year. Maybe the year before last. No, I think it was last year. I like doing this. It's kind of like a surprise. I kind of put my little posters all right here they're like shuffled up in there we don't know where what's coming up when okay they're just randomized first up is society of snow it is based on a true story it is a netflix movie and that one is number nine we'll see how i feel about certain things later on but for right now number nine is really good this one actually came out at the beginning of the year and it's like has really stuck with me inside out too finally i saw an animated movie y'all it's about freaking time and of course I loved it. I love me inside out number one. I love me inside out number two. It made me not like full cry. Like I thought I was gonna cry. Like I literally went in with tissues y'all. Like well always tissue like, like a box of tissues. But I only needed one tissue at last. And the way that that whole like anxiety attack was going it just it just hit. It hit. This one would be number two then we have lisa frankenstein i feel like it's very cappy it doesn't have enough love right now but in a couple years kind of like with jennifer's body in a couple years it's definitely gonna find its people and it's gonna like you know get big but it's the 80s i i loved it i had a lot of fun with it and this one number 10 number 10 the beekeeper jason statham we love some action stuff. We love him kicking ass. We, you know, it's just a Jason Seatham type of movie. And this one, I think I'm going to put it as number, number six. That seems good. Then we have a Civil War. I love the way that the movie looks. I know a lot of people were like, meep about it. Because like your fault, you're not really like wartime. Well, you are wartime. But I liked having the perspective of these war journalists and just kind of their journey of what they go through and how they're also in the war also obviously because they're trying to take the pictures i mean a little thing that you do right to kept, get the story yeah i'm so hungry my blood sugar is dropping okay i'm getting a little delusional but this one actually was number two for the longest time until i saw inside out so it's just going over here to number threats then we have challengers yes i love me some challengers not because of the whole shower scene not because of the threesome even though that's kind of like what they're marking this as because but it's more than just that it is a love triangle that's going around here then we have dune part two austin butler did absolutely amazing in this movie i loved him as a villain and then i love me some florence Pugh. anywho this is my number one movie this is my number one movie ever since I saw it. It's been there. Next one, Bad Boys, Ride or Die. I'm gonna put this one as number five. Quiet Place Part Three, no, not Part Three. Day One. Day One. I enjoyed it. I like to see how it officially kind of started. I kind of wish we got a little bit more of well, how did you know not to make noise? Because, you know, she kind of passed out, comes true, and then it's like, shh, how long were you passed out that everybody knew in New York? Of course, I was more invested in the cat. I said, come on, don't you kill that damn cat. Although I will say that some of the, a lot of the decisions that came around, the cat being saved at certain parts, I was just like, sir, you leave that cat alone. Leave said cat alone. The cat followed you to the pharmacy the cat knew where you were going the cat found its owner 
the cat, the cat knows where it needs to go and what it needs to do, how to stay quiet. Don't try to save the damn cat. Cat, okay, it's not a dog. I mean, I love. I mean, I'm a dog, my mom myself. And then regardless, I would try to save my fur baby. But even though with Coco, I, we would be dead. We would. I mean, I would not be able to move her because once she's like, she's a big girl. I can just pick her up and go. She would be dead. Ah, you know what? I think I'm gonna put it over here at eight. And then finally we have Abigail. Vampire movie. I love me some vampire movies. For a modern day vampire movie, it did it. It did a good job. Did I have problems with it? Of course. I think it's so funny. Every time I do a list of my favorite stuff, instead of pointing out the positives, I'm always pointing out the negatives. It's kind of like, I want you to understand I know the negatives that go around. I'm acknowledging them, but I'm able to look past said negatives because a lot of stuff doesn't make sense for vampire stuff. But obviously it's going to be here number seven because that's the last part. And let me actually look. Does this look good to me? Do I want to switch things around? Mm, I do. I'm going to switch Society of Snow to number eight. And then we're going to do... Quiet Place Day 1 as number 9. Do I want to switch anything else? Uh, I'm going to switch The Beekeeper and Abigail because I think I liked Abigail just a tad bit more. That looks good. I like that. This is my list of my top 10 favorite movies of 2024 so far. I told you we're going to cruise because I'm so sorry right now. Like you have no idea. Again, I only have 28 movies to choose from, okay? But if you want to see all 28 movies that I have seen, check me out on Letterboxd. Don't forget, like, comment, share, subscribe. I promise you I'm more put together. Not really. I'm very like, ah. So if you like, ah, consider subscribing. <laughs> and after this video, you know what? Maybe I'll go ahead and start filming that after I eat. I will start working on the rest of my top 100 movies. Where we're going to be, where are we at from 660? 60 the next 20 spots from 60 and that should be coming your way as well <laughs> thank you so much for watching until next time i'll see you guys at concessions bye about whether or way to nothing oh that ketchup not mustard i want to hear it i want to hear it